a big um, elephant in the room here with, with this, you guys getting on the front foot and fighting misinformation slash disinformation is the use of these very well put together docu-series, uh, things like Cowspiracy, What the Health, uh, Forks Over Knives. There's been a bunch of them. And I know you've, you've challenged these in your own podcast, but what is your reaction to these um, sticky, well-produced, heavily funded documentaries that attack the animal uh, agriculture industry like Cowspiracy, et cetera? Yeah, we did do a summer like debunking series where every month we watched one of those um, videos. I, don't, I hate calling them like documentaries because I feel like that is not an accurate representation. Um, and it was really fascinating to go through them like point by point and see where they were wrong. We brought on some different experts. We brought on like a registered dietitian to, to cover game changers with us, which was really mm -hmm. helpful to see their perspective on, uh, you know, the plant versus animal protein conversation. And uh, they definitely take one point, right, and run with it. Mm -hmm. uh, whether, like Natalie said, they show, you know, they say this is the beef industry and they show just a feedlot. And you're like, there's so much more to this conversation. Um, we also found a lot of the facts were super misleading. You know, one of them, I forget which, I think it was Food Inc. I can't remember which one it was, that um, was using outdated information from like the UN's Livestock Long Shadow, even though those numbers had been withdrawn and proven incorrect. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's no like, notice on it on Netflix when you watch it saying like this is outdated or this is you know I think there should be some kind of disclaimer now on some of those videos or uh, movies that have been um, disproved and so you know we for sea spiracy we brought on a seafood expert and I found that one to be very fascinating mm -hmm. getting their perspective because there was so much misinformation in that video and and that was the case with all of them um you know Natalie and I personally a uh, part of our uh podcast is that we have been working on a docu series where we'd be able to highlight different pieces of agriculture uh and be able to cast you know agriculture in a more truthful light and and bring that nuance to the conversation if I could tell anyone who is watching any of those films one thing, I would tell them to remember to watch this film knowing that there was an agenda, mm -hmm. that this film was made with an agenda. And that is going to sway every single thing they do without this film. Um, of course, they're going to find the one vegan ex-rancher that will tout the animal industry to put in their film. They are going to find the one person that can do that. Of course, they are going to you know, do leading conversations and only include part of the film the conversations from the interviews that they want like that the those films are made to get people to stop eating meat that is the agenda and so they're not going to show wide range of conversations they're not going to have nuanced conversations they're not going to have differing perspectives you know they're not going to show that they're going to show the one thing they want to show and they're going to find the most compelling emotional way to show that mm -hmm. i know there was that one of the families that was interviewed um, they're a california family they're a direct consumer and she has come out and said since, like, they twisted my words. They were leading conversations. This is actually what I said. They left out this portion. I mean, they basically debunked, you know, everything that that film, the whole, their whole portion in it. They were like, that was not an accurate representation of how we portrayed. And people don't know that. They just know that, oh, there's an ex, you know, the vegan rancher who hates the industry. There's this rancher that said these things. And, and then they go with it. And it's like, you have to understand those films are made with an agenda. Yeah, I think, too... Please a few go, of the yeah. people that we um, interviewed actually were like, um, for Seaspiracy, we interviewed Valentine Thomas. And she said she had reached out and said, like, I would love to be a part of this. Like, can mm -hmm. I help find people for you to interview? And basically got completely, you know, shut down. Obviously, they did not want to interview her or other people. And that just like it really like compounded, you know, how I felt about the, the movie that was like you wouldn't even bring on like the counter point and have this actual discussion same with Vinny Tortorich when we interviewed him like he had invited people to come on to his uh film and of course in no response no one would come on and so if you can't like come to the table and actually have a conversation and a discussion about this like you're you clearly do have that agenda as Natalie mentioned it's very very important for people to consider that I think and I, I almost fell victim to it because Cowspiracy came out a long time ago now. And I remember um, it was long before I was in this world of even talking to farmers and ranchers. And I remember like watching that documentary and sitting with myself like, damn, I got some hard decisions to make. But then there was still a thread of curiosity and uh, like this little thing that was left in me that went, but documentaries are designed to basically feed you a narrative and confirm that that is the way. So let me do some counter arguing with this thing. And 
turns out that, yeah, it's it's a lot of uh, mistruths just blatantly. And it seems like it's easier to trick people than it is to convince them that they were tricked. And these are really good at doing that. So the solution, I'm guessing this is where it gets into your journey into podcasting and such, is to continue to be a beacon of truth and to have more nuanced conversations, like you say, to invite experts on that challenge the dominant narratives, because these are the dominant narratives now. There's a lot of money behind them. There's a lot of funding behind them. This is a lot of products that are being sold on the back of them, etc. Hello friends, if you enjoyed that clip, then you can watch the entire thing by heading to this link over here, or you can find us wherever you find podcasts by searching Radical Health Radio. If there's value here, please hit that like button, let us know in a comment what your biggest takeaway was, and hit subscribe, support the show as we support you. We'll see you soon.